Hey, you guys. I'm so excited about this episode because I'm joined by finance expert, host of The Ramsey Show, and my dad, Dave Ramsey. Hey, dad. Thanks for being back on. Good to be back. We're twins. Look at this. Look at that. Twinsies. Look at that. Twinsies. I know. It's the black shirt day. The black shirt day. Yeah. Okay. So a month or two ago, George Campbell and I did an episode on negotiation on our podcast, Smart Money Happy Hour. And it did great because George and I went back and forth on this like role play where he like was trying to sell me a boat. And and it was great. (laughs) It was awesome because there's a lot to learn about negotiation. And so I realized, oh my gosh, I, I, I feel more awkward in asking for a deal or just trying to like play the game of negotiation. George loves it. You love it. I feel like growing up, that's like part of though being wise with money, especially if you're on a tight budget, you're like, okay, oh, yeah, yeah, we're going to go in and ask for a deal. And you still, I feel like with cars and different stuff, mm-hmm. right? You still like negotiate. Yeah. I ask for a deal all the time. Sure. Not because I'm a cheapskate, but just because it's part of the rhythm of being a noble hillbilly. You're supposed to get a deal. <laughs> I know. Because growing up, do you feel like you did it more when you guys were tight with money? Like, if you had to walk in and buy a washer and dryer, were you more apt to, like, no, no, we're, we have to get this deal? Like, what did that look like? Um, yeah, probably. I, I guess we were we were tighter on money, so we were more careful with every little thing. Then we, we might be a little sloppy today on, you know, not every single thing. But, sure. but you know, my mindset is always, you know, just ask, you know, you know, is there a promo code? Is there a coupon? Is there a deal? Are you getting ready to put this on sale this weekend? And because... You know, the, these stores in particular, if you're dealing with that, they their like, job is to sell stuff. <laughs> right. So they, they like to sell stuff. So it's a blessing to them yeah. if we buy stuff. So it, it's always good to just try to see if there's something that motivates us to step into the deal right then. Yeah. How, okay, like out of like 10 times you ask for a deal, how often do you actually get one, do you think? I almost always get something. Do you think it's because it's you? No. You think like just asking for it? No, it's just... um. You know, it, it, honestly, because it's me, I get one thing or the other. I either get like they got their dukes up, like I'm gonna, you know, I don't want, I'm gonna fight I'm gonna Dave get Ramsey. All the money I can I'm gonna out fight of this Dave guy. Ramsey. You know, <laughs> uh, and I don't want Dave Ramsey's always looking for a deal. Or they're like, oh, he's got plenty of money. I'm gonna take every bit he's got. Yes, so yes. So I have to. We get some of that too. Totally. And so, but most of the time when we're just dealing with regular folks in a regular transaction and they're treating us like regular folks, right. Then it's just like, guys, you know, that doesn't work. You know, let's figure out a way that this works. And, See, that know. even makes me nervous. Okay, well, we're going to get into it. Okay, so he's going to be walking us through four steps to a successful negotiation. Plus, he's going to share some of his biggest do's and don'ts when it comes to this topic. But first, before we get started, I want to tell you guys about one of my new favorite games, Tapple. So we've been talking about this on the show. And you guys, this is a really fun game. And I love this game personally because there's some games that are kind of like laid back and you can kind of socialize. And those games are great. I like a little bit of the competitive spirit and Tapple has it. There's like a timer. You got to do something in an amount of time. Your brain has to work fast. And if it doesn't, you lose. And so it's just fun. And it goes quick, which is great too. So if you have kids and they know how to spell, they're going to be able to play this game. And your friends and your family. And there's so many great memories when it comes to board games. And it's a great way, especially if you're trying to get out of debt or save your emergency funds, if you're not able to go out and spend a bunch of money out in the world, being home with your family, not being on screens and playing games. It sets up a great, great night for friends and family. So make sure to check out Tapple at Walmart. All right, let's set up the the first scene, okay? I'm walking in to an appliance store. I got to buy a dryer. Our dryer broke. Mm -hmm. I need to buy a dryer. So my first question to you is, do I ask for help or do I just mosey the aisles and not look desperate and see if they come up to me? Oh, I don't think it matters. It doesn't matter at all. That's not going to affect it. Um, You know, it's just whether the salesperson in that particular store is empowered to change prices. If they're not empowered, then you're going to have to talk to the salesperson and whoever their leader is, whoever the manager is in the store. So you could ask for help or have them come to you you, either way. There's not a power. No, because, you know, this is not a conflict. This is a pleasant experience. (laughs) They're making money. (laughs) And I'm buying a dryer. It's a pleasant experience. all the way around. Okay. (laughs) Okay. So then, again, you mentioned it earlier. You know, if you're talking to the 24-year-old sales guy, Mm -hmm. would you automatically be like, hey, can you grab your manager? I'd love to, you know, uh, bring him in. Would you offer that? Or are you good just going back and forth with the sales guy? I I just ask him. I just say, listen, you know, we're going to have to do something different than we're doing right here in order for me to get the dryer because this isn't working. Can you pull that off or do we need to like bring in your leader, your, okay. your, your manager? And it's okay with me either way, but you know, this, what we're doing right here is not going to work. So we're going to have to t- 
take it to another level. Yeah. And in order to do that, do you have, can you do that? And they're like, sometimes they'll go, okay, you know, mm -hmm. I, and they've got the power to, Mark, I didn't tell you about this, but there's this way we can, you know, if you right. wait till Saturday morning, we can do it because they're getting ready to go on sale for Labor Day or whatever, right, you right. know, all that kind of garbage. They'll, they'll pull something out of their hat or they'll go, you know, I, Dave, I don't know, you know, Mr. Ranger, we've done all we can do. So, well, let's let's, see, let's ask your manager then and just see if there's something yeah. we can do because we're not going to be able to connect at this level. Okay, it's good. Okay, next, do you tell them that you have a certain amount of money to spend? Do you tell them that amount or... Do you let them negotiate or like say the price and you just try to bring them down to what you, like you know the total in your head? Is it, do you lose power sharing that total? Because George, in our boat discussions, I had like $65,000 buy this boat or whatever. And he was like, no, he told me, he was like, no, you never share up front what you have. You always kind of work them down or something. I don't remember the exact discussion we had, but I remember he mentioned that. So I was like, oh yeah, I don't know. I probably wouldn't, depending on the situation, what, what is it? Is it a washer and dryer at a retail store? You know, you're you're not dealing with anything there. But but if you're buying a boat from an individual that's selling a used boat, yeah, I definitely would not tell them that. Okay. Because what the amount of money you have is not relative to the discussion. What's relative to the discussion is what's the boat worth and what am I willing to pay for it? Okay, that's That's fair. really all that matters. Yeah, 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 that's good, that's good. Okay, and then how long do you go back and forth with someone until you realize, oh, yeah, it's not going to be, there's not going to be a deal here. I try not to get into the go back and forth thing. Yeah. I just go, you know, give me your best deal. What have you got here? And, and you know, they'll negotiate with themselves if you ask them to. Mm -hmm. You know, it's <laughs> like, you know, you're asking 65000 and you go, well, I, that's cool. But, you know, I'm here with cash and we can do a deal today. What's your best deal? The one that makes you hurt just a little bit, but still the boat's gone. Yeah. Because your, your goal is to get rid of the boat today, right? And they're like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, well, you know, what's your very best mm -hmm. deal? And they go, you know, 55000 Well, I might have offered fifty nine. Totally, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to be quiet and let them come on Especially down. Especially a higher price. And then when they that. go, and I go, well, is that all you can do? Fifty five, And they go, huh, I could do fifty four five. You know, I mean, okay, well, you know. I'm willing to do, and then I'll put a price in. You know, I'm willing to do 52 right now. Okay, so you still even go a little lower. Yeah, sure, <laughs> sure, why not? Because all they can do is say, no, I told you, 54 is all I can do. Yeah. Well, okay, we then, you then we're it. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and all of this is contingent upon this. There's, there's three things that make a negotiation successful. One is you as a buyer have to have a lot of knowledge about the value and the details of what you're doing. Yeah. So if I'm going to look at a $65,000 boat or a washer and dryer, I'm going to know the price of that washer and dryer a whole bunch of different places. Mm -hmm. I'm going to know I can get it here at Amazon. I know I can get it here shipped. I know I can get it at Costco there. I know I can get it at Lowe's there, whatever, right? Yep, yep. I'm going to have looked through their, their website. And then if I wander into the store, then the guy goes and I go, well, man, I get like six places cheaper than that. Mm -hmm. you know, so your knowledge base of the thing and that $65,000 boat, I've looked it up on Kelly Blue Book. I've mm -hmm. studied some of the marine websites where they're selling boats. And just a little, you know, I'm actually not coming in cold. Like, I have no idea what this boat is worth. Yes. I actually know what it's worth. That, and that so, happened to me with George. <laughs> I, know, I know the boat is worth 60. And so I know if I can get it for 53, yeah. that I've gotten a good deal. And he got rid of a boat that he's sitting in his driveway blocking everything. He needs to get rid of it. So yeah. it's good for him. Um, so I, that, the second thing is know your options, which is part of the knowledge base. you got to know the product, know what it is, know what the value is, and then know your options. Know where else you can do it. You don't have to buy that boat. Mm -hmm. I don't have to buy that washer and dryer today at that place. And I think that's one of the biggest mistakes people make. And again, you could go range from like, Wash and dryer to a house, even. Yeah. But you get so locked in on oh, one yeah. individual thing, and you're like, "This is all I want. This is all I want." And then suddenly you lose power. You've because, lost it all. Yeah. Because what what you don't realize is the hu the human on the other side, even though they don't know they're doing it, they have taken all your cues in. Your body language changes. Your voice pitch changes. The way you're standing changes. The way your eyes are moving changes. Yeah, you're. Uh, your cadence and your voice, everything changes when you are married to something. Yeah, and desperate for that one. You have you have surrendered, and all of the, you know, all the body, you know, and they're like, oh, that one's dead. Let's just wrap it up, you know. And yeah. the, but if you're still in the game, you know, and you're still like, eh, 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 you know, mm -hmm. and you're, you know, I can go someplace else, and they know you mean it, then yeah. all of a sudden that changes their 
need yep. to help you with the transaction. Uh, and, and then the third thing that goes with that is patience. Mm -hmm. The walking away know, is knowing the product, knowing your options, and then patience. And that gives you walk away power. And patience is, I don't have to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Because we really, there's very few of these things we have to do, but we emotionally get all excited and mm -hmm. we get car fever. And so, ooh, I have to buy the car and it's the only one and they're rare and they're hard to get. And, oh, and we, all this drama queen crap in our own head costs us tens of thousands of dollars. Yes, it's so true though. It is so emotional. And especially depending on what it is, I'm like, it is, I can feel that, feel that so much. Okay, so now that we've kind of gone over some of that, because I think those are such great tips. Okay, are there any things that you just, don't do, like avoid this. Well, I mean, we would be, be the opposite of it. You don't walk in with no knowledge. You don't walk in and go, oh, you know, and because and, they can read as you're walking up to the couch, the furniture yeah. salesman goes, well, they already bought the couch. Yeah, yeah. Or they're going, no, they're kind of looking and they might go to the other store. Mm -hmm. And so when, when, you know, they can read your body language, again, your voice tone, and they don't know they're doing it. It's not like they had some class on it. Sure. But humans, we know. We can, yeah. You just look over and you go, well, that one bought that. And yeah. there's no playing hard to get here at all. Mm -hmm. And so uh, uh, the other thing I, I don't do is I'm, I'm not trying to harm the other side. This is not to bring harm to them. Not be mean it's and a, rude. Well, it's yeah. not, and therefore it's not a conflict. It's actually a blessing to the guy if we buy his boat and get it out of his driveway. And he has cash on his hand to go do whatever it is he's going to do with his cash. He wanted rid of the boat. We got rid of the boat. He, he got, his goal was accomplished. That's a win for him. Win for us is we got a boat and we got a good price on it based on our discussion. And so this is a win-win scenario. If you have to harm someone, yeah. take advantage of someone, lie to someone in order to get a good deal, that's yeah. completely off limits. Totally. You have to have integrity and you can have the best interest of the other party at heart. Yeah. And do you think, is there, a, is there a, like ever a scenario where somebody is selling something, we'll use a car, and you, you've done all your research and you know it's worth 20 grand and they're like, I don't know if this would ever happen, but they're, they're like, oh, I don't know, maybe 12. And you're thinking, oh no, like you could be getting more for this and you don't know what you're doing on that side. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Does that make sense? Like, yeah, I've done that buying like real estate, for instance. I said, yeah. you know, the appraisal on this property is 300000 That means you could probably get 300000 for it. And like, you really need to think about that. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. if you want it sold today and we'll close it Monday, I'll give you cash. The deal I'm willing to do is two hundred. But, you know, you really need to think about that yeah, and just yeah, kind of yeah. put it back on them because you don't want them later feeling like, well, they ripped me off. Yeah, like, that's right. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, totally. you know, and I've heard some wonderful stories with Ramsey listeners, as an example. I, I talked to one not long ago, and the lady said, you know, we had a, a cheap car that we were selling. We were moving up. Mm -hmm. uh, or we were buying a car, I'm sorry, for our daughter and um, uh, for a teenager, a cheap car. And the people they're talking to, and so they said, why are you selling the car? We're selling it to get out of debt. Well, they said you know, we're going to pay full price. Mm, to help them on their debt-free journey. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was just, it was more of a generosity move yeah. than it was a negotiation move. Yeah, totally. But they just said that. Or That's cool. uh, I've run into situations working in the church in a ministry situation where there's a widow involved mm -hmm. and someone says, okay, you know, you don't take advantage of widows. Mm -hmm. I mean, you want to make sure you pay too much there, right? right. But that's not really a negotiation thing. That's yeah. just a values issue. That's right. That's right. And I think that's where people get maybe could get tripped up when we're talking about negotiation, all of it, where it's like, not only do I not want to feel cheap, but I also like don't want the other person to walk away with a bad deal. I want us to both win. And you can do that. Yeah. You can do that in a negotiation where you both walk away. Exactly. I mean, like the ultimate is the garage sale, right? If it doesn't sell by the end of the day, what happens to the crap in the garage sale? Right. It goes to Salvation Army yeah. for yeah. zero. Yeah. And so anything you get for that couch— It's great at three o'clock in the afternoon in the garage sale yeah. is way more than you're going to get tomorrow at Salvation Army. Yeah, yeah. A and we got it out of your gar garage and you didn't have to move it. Yes, You know, yes, so totally. everybody's winning here. Yeah, that's good. That's so good. Okay, so let's talk about what people should do in like very specific scenarios that they probably will find themselves in. So the first big one, buying a house. Mm -hmm. Negotiations around house prices, which again, the market is, it's so wild, it's high, but yet people, you know, depending on where they are financially, still are in a position that they want to buy a house and they're able to. So they're walking into that scenario. What are some things in there that they should do in the housing one specifically? Well, again, let, let's go back to our big three, okay? We're going to have a lot of knowledge about it. What's the square foot, every square foot price on the size of home in the area that I'm looking for? Therefore, what is this house worth, okay? Mm -hmm. And by the time you've looked at a few neighborhoods and you've kind of got it dialed in, 
your realtor, your real estate agent, your Ramsey trusted agent should be walking with you and saying, okay, here's comps, here's comparable sales in the area. So, you know, you're looking at that house and you're going, it, it, it's just not a $900,000 house. Yep. It's a $700,000 house. The guy's got 900 on it, but it's just not. It's mm -hmm. not worth that. The value, the appraise, it won't appraise for that. And, and so you know that going in. So you got to know what's going on. You don't get married to it. Yeah. You got to maintain walk away. And the way you don't get married to it is you have lots of options. You just keep looking. There's yeah. another house. There's, an, there's a house on every stinking corner. We'll find another house. Yeah. And so slow down. Where people got, you know, in this last cycle when it got so frenzied, people were overpaying mm -hmm. because they were violating every bit of that. Mm -hmm. And they were just like, they were completely on fire. They were in the fever mode and run, 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 run. I'm not going to get a house. As if in your entire life, you're not going to get a house if you don't buy one right now in one of the most frenzied times in history. Well, that's crazy. Yeah. Just calm down. So, you know, for instance, we have bought, Ramsey's have bought no real estate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> recently. There's not been deals. And I don't buy real estate unless I buy it at a deal. There's not even been any bargains yeah. out there. You know, things are slowing down. We may see a few more bargains again. So we may be back in the market again. But we just sat on the sidelines, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, in terms of investment real estate. Yeah. You know, and we're not going to buy it unless it's a deal. So for a family, though, that's buying just their primary right. home, if you're in a financial position to do it, though. Yeah. It's a, it's a great time to buy. But don't overpay, though. That's yeah, what's The point hard. is don't overpay because you didn't control you. Yes, yeah. Your emotions. Yeah. And if you've got other options, because you've looked at a lot of different properties, Sharon and I sold our home back in 20, and we knew we were moving to a certain neighborhood, so we had looked at eight houses in that neighborhood mm -hmm. and immediately had ruled out five of them. So there were three possibilities. And, you know, we were going to buy one of them because that's where we wanted to be. And, you know, so we bounced it. We hit one and couldn't, and we bounced and went to the second one. We're living in the second choice, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, huh, and, and it turned great, out, it turned out to be okay. You know, totally, it's a great totally. house. It's probably better than the other one is, I think God had his hand on it. Yeah, so, yeah. You, you, but you just can't get all fatalistic as if there's one, there's only one. Yes. Oh, brother. <laughs> Drama. Okay. So for cars, what's some of the rules, the, the three you're talking about for sure, but things like you want to check to make sure like clean Take it to a mechanic, mm -hmm. making sure that it's inspected. Like, what are a couple of those nuanced things? Yeah, with cars? It, it, it's great to have the car and having a mechanic do an inspection on it. If you want to get real detailed, they can do an oil change with the owner's permission and do an analysis on the oil because what's in the oil, it tells you how bad the engine is. Mm. If there's shavings in there and so forth, it tells you the engine's got some wear. If there's smoke in that oil, there's, that engine's got some wear. And so you can look at stuff like that. If you want to get real technical about it, I wouldn't do all that for a 20000 and under car, though. Mm -hmm. But if you're buying a super something expensive, yeah, I'd probably have it looked at. Yeah. Uh, if you're not getting it from a reputable dealer who's already combed through it. Do you but, think dealers or individual buyers for someone that's buying a used, you know, $25,000 car? Uh, individual. Individual. Because the individual doesn't have any, um, they don't have cost of goods sold in it. Mm -hmm. If a dealer's got that $25,000 car sitting there, it's because he's traded for it or he bought it at auction to put on his mm -hmm. lot. That means he just the other day paid $18,000 for it, okay? The seller of, of an, an individual selling a $25,000 car, they bought it four years ago for $50,000. Yeah. And so what they paid for it is completely irrelevant in the discussion as to what you'll pay for it today. Mm -hmm. What the dealer paid for it is very relevant because they're not going to buy it for 18 and then lose money. Right, right. So their cost of goods sold enters into that. They're looking at margins is what mm -hmm. they're looking at. An individual seller is not, their margins don't come into it. They, yeah. What they paid for it's irrelevant. It's just what's the car worth? worth? What are they willing to take for it? What's their situation? How motivated are they to sell it? Yeah. Uh, but you can almost always get a better deal from an individual. Yeah, those are great tips. So I think one of the most powerful things, though, for people to take away from this is that negotiation is not bad and, and that you can have a level of power in it to make a wise decision for your family and not harm the other person in the process. Absolutely. I mean, if you just change your moccasins for a second with the person who, if you have something you want to sell, if someone buys it from you at a price that, you, that you're okay with, they have blessed you. Yeah, yeah. And so you're a blessing when you're a buyer. Mm -hmm. You're bringing them good news. <laughs> you know, I have I mean, money. I have money. Yeah, I have money, and you're not going to have to have that boat in your driveway anymore. It's yeah. a wonderful day for both of us. You so know, good. so you just—it's not a conflict. Yeah. 
it's a dance. Yes, and everybody's yes. enjoying the party. And do the dance because it'll it'll end up saving you money, probably, if you get the deal. That's the other great thing yeah. is you walk away. I think when people uh, don't ask for a bargain or, or refuse to negotiate for that vote, um, it's because, A, they feel like it's a conflict, mm-hmm. or B, that they feel like they're harming someone. Mm-hmm. And you just have to take those things off the table. If it is a conflict or you're harming someone, you should go to another deal. Right. You should walk away. Right. You shouldn't do something to harm someone. Yep. But, you know, I used to buy foreclosure houses. Mm -hmm. And we would buy them and close the deal on Thursday before they get foreclosed on on Friday. Yeah. So these people did not get foreclosed on and put money in their pocket. Yeah. The 24 hours later, they would have zero. Yeah. And a foreclosure on their record. Yes. Obviously, I'm getting a great buy. But it saved their lives. Yeah, yeah, in that way. Totally, totally. So good. Thanks for coming on. Fun. Negotiation's a great topic, you guys. And again, it can be a little intimidating at times, but you guys, step into it. Step into it, especially these bigger purchases that you're doing, whether it's appliances, cars, even houses. Use these tips because it'll save some money, which is awesome. Okay, so one way if you are planning to buy something that I would really recommend to use is the Every Dollar app. So we talk about this app all the time on the show, but it's great for budgeting, but it's also great for planning. So if you know ahead of time, hey, we're gonna have to replace the car probably by next summer, you can start putting money away and actually using Every Dollar has a tool in there to help with the sinking fund and to help you when it comes to these big purchases. So make sure to download it for free. Check out Every Dollar. And if you're interested in hearing more, learning more from Dave himself, all of his Ramsey personalities, make sure to check out The Ramsey Show. And it is on podcasts, on YouTube, on radio, on Sirius XM. It's all over the place. So make sure to listen and follow you on all socials at Dave Ramsey. And uh, you're on TikTok, yeah, Instagram, Facebook. Scary. You're on all of it. Really it's pretty, scary. pretty great. Make sure to send this video to a friend who may be like me and you, they need like a little pep talk, you know, when it comes to negotiating. Make sure to send them this video. Thanks, you guys. And remember to take control of your money and create a life you love. <laughs>